Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now what I'd like to talk to you about today is this five inch toothpick concept. This is a frame I designed, this is the first prototype. And I mean, of course, a five inch toothpick sounds completely crazy and like it doesn't make any sense at all. So I think it makes sense to just take a, take a step back and kind of walk you through a bit of toothpick history and why we ended up with five inch toothpicks. All right, now things started just a few months ago when Kebab FPV put some 1103 motors and 65 millimeter props to 2.5 inch props on an all-in-one wood board. So these are ESC and FC in one board and sometimes even a receiver. This is the Crazy B. This is pretty much the first one that was common. And it's got a five amp ESC rating, if I'm not mistaken here, around five amps. So this was enough to run some 65 millimeter props it was this kind of type of quad that is still around. It is super small and quiet and nice to fly. But very soon, these all-in-one boards moved up to 12 amp rating. So we got the Gap RC and Beta FPV board. This one's got the Gap RC, if I'm, if I'm not wrong here, or the, the Beta FPV, they are pretty similar anyways. These ones have a 12 amp rating. So what happened is we moved up to three inch props. Now, the first props popping up were these old gem fan props free blade version of this one and soon HQ developed a new toothpick 3 inch prop that's the HQ T3 by 2 and this is the latest evolution the gem fan kebab FPV collaboration 3018 prop and I think probably soon we're going to see some tri blades too now that made it possible to move up to this 3 inch prop size and bigger motors these are 1404 motors, which is huge, but is kind of um, kind of quad. I mean, the standard now is 1303 or 1204. But in my opinion, this whole evolution was driven by these all-in-one boards. And now we're about to oh, we just taking the next step because we got a 20 amp all-in-one board by Beta FPV. So the logical step is build even bigger toothpicks now. <laughs> it seems there seems to be kind of a, a logic here. All in one wood board ESC amp rating goes up, toothpick size increases. And we already see four inch T mount kind of toothpick style props. These are HQT4 by 2.5. These should run pretty well on a 1404, although I didn't test it yet. But with 20 amps, that's quite a lot, and it's even enough for a 5 inch, a very light 5 inch. And this is what I'm working on. This is why I designed this frame here. And I think Bob Rogi or Kebab FPV is also working on something in that 5 inch range. And uh, I'm really interested. I think it's really interesting to see if this will work out. But I'll, I'll show you a bit more details about this frame now. and what what I will probably use um, in terms of components for this first prototype. All right, so this is the frame. It weighs exactly 30 grams with all the hardware and this center lock piece here that I'll talk about in a minute. Now, I choose to use a full motor mounting platform with four screw holes. I played around with three or two holes and in my opinion, it didn't save enough weight to justify the loss of stability that occurs here. It will fit uh, some 16 by 16 to M3 to 12 by 12 M2 mounts. Because uh, with this frame, motors both could work that have the, the bigger mounting platform like 2204s, like these, for example, these Xnova 2204s could work. But also something like 1507, 1606, 1804, and those have the smaller mounting pattern. That's why I integrated both of those on this motor platform. The arms are four millimeters and pretty slim, um, but I think this should work. I have some experience here with a, I got this here for comparison. This is a very light five inch gate hunter frame. This is a 199 gram dry five inch. And as you can see, similar arm dimensions because I know that these work on a, on a very relied five inch, so this should be okay. Now the construction itself is pretty simple. I just sandwiched these arms between two 1.5 millimeter top and bottom plates. The top plate has these integrated mounts for 
the all-in-one board. So I will put this up here and have a canopy on top, a nano cam, nano VTX, everything just like a regular toothpick. I decided not to use 16 by 16 or 20 by 20 stacks uh, because I think it would just be cleaner to have the all-in-one and I'm building it specifically for the beta FPV all-in-one. But someone pointed out that in these holes here, I could have a little GPU adapter to mount um, classical 16 by 16 and 20 by 20 stacks. So why not? Um, could be a thing, but um, for now I'm, I'm only working with the beta FPV boards. That's why it's got this one inch by one inch mounting pattern here. Apart from that, um, I used lock nuts here to, to simplify things. Uh, apart from that, I mean, not much very, my very, not very much more to say because it's a very simple design. Um, but the interesting thing that I used here is this, it's actually, a, what you see here in the center is a bicycle part. Now, I got kind of inspired by Kabab FB who had a plastic or TPU, some kind of 3D printed part here in the middle, linking up these, uh, these arms. But it's just a purely passive piece of plastic. And I thought, why not have something that is active and apply some pressure to ensure that these arms aren't going anywhere? Because, I mean, of course, it's, this is carbon, so there are some variations in the in the machining and the tolerances. With time, it, um, it might get some, uh, some play here, some kind of movement that the fit will just get worse. So if you have something here in the center that applies pressure, let me show you these parts. These are standard bicycle parts. This is what you fit your front gear on the crank with. You can buy this in literally any bike shop. This is just a 10 millimeter kind of counterpiece here and an aluminum screw that goes together like this. And this thing here, I mean, four of those fix a uh, a gear on a crank on a bicycle where you st stand on with your whole body weight. So these apply a lot of pressure if you really tighten them. And this really fixes um, the frame here. It gives it a nice, nice feel, nothing moving. Now the, the mechanism inside looks like this. As you can see, the arms are pushing against each other. Each other. It's nice and wide as a big uh, contact surface between the arms and everything is then nicely sandwiched by this aluminum piece. All right, this, this is uh, the frame construction, pretty simple. Now what kind of components am I going to use? I mentioned a few already, which are pretty obvious. Beta FPV 20 amp board, nano cam, nano VTX, probably the Ishii Nano, a canopy, and um, a small receiver. Now the interesting thing are the motors and that's where I'm not sure what will work. Not, at the biggest size I'm considering is actually just transplanting these 2204s from my 5 inch but I also, I'm also waiting for some 1606 motors, the Emacs 1606 motors to see how those work out. Those are for me the smallest size I will try. 1804 is another very interesting size. Um, the same Xnova motors here come also in an 1804 size. So that could be something that will work. But to be honest, I have no idea what will be best. In any case, it will need very light five inch props, the lightest I can find. And um, I mean, I'm, I have to admit, I'm a bit skeptical because to be honest, this very light five inch here doesn't fly very well for some reason. <laughs> and I'm not the only one that had this realization that a five inch quad, when it goes below a certain weight, and in my opinion, this is around 200 grams dry, doesn't feel very, very nice, very locked in the air, especially at lower speed. So it's, it's very, very fast, moves very fast. But as soon as you go slow and you're on slower racing courses, things start to feel not as good. <laughs> the, the handling just gets worse. Now, I don't know why this is that way. My my theory would be that the load of the prop just gets too low. The RPM at which the prop is spinning just gets too low and things just start to get messy. But to be honest, I, I don't know what exactly is happening. I just know um, that it doesn't work very well and just a normal five inch is better. But I mean, here, 
still we are talking about a different thing because this will be way lighter. So maybe <laughs> something like a, a, a valley of death in terms of weight where it doesn't work. And then if you get above or below, it works again. So what I'm trying here basically is getting way below this weight, way below 200, gr 200 uh, grams. I think it should be around 120 grams, the finished build, and see if this works um, again. So I'm pretty curious to see how this will work out. What I will do, I mean, for all of you guys, especially in the Facebook group, micro, uh, ultralight micro builders and tech tips, we like to play around with different setups and try things as early adopters. I will put all those files on Thingiverse so you can have this frame manufactured for you by any CNC service of your choice and play around with different setups. And I hope that this will kind of accelerate the progress we made on this type of uh, quad. I mean, if it, if it works, <laughs> if we find some combination of motors and props that works on these very, very, very light five inch toothpick setups. Now, um, that's all I had to say for today. I hope guys you found this interesting and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.